Hello and welcome to a special episode of Sudrian Histories. This is an announcement because I finally decided to take the plunge and add merchandise to my website. Go to railwaymania.net, click on the shop tab and you'll be able to see all the items that I have for sale. The first of the Northwestern Railway themed pieces of merchandise are these posters. I was inspired to do something in the Art Deco style to really root my version of the Northwestern Railway in the real world. This one features number 705 Westlin, speeding from Tidmouth to London on the overnight sleeper train. If you want to get one of these, they're limited to 25 for the initial batch, so you should get in quickly. There'll be a link in the description. But I'll also be adding more new designs, and I wanted to show you the process that I went through, going from a photograph to the final illustration. So this one should feature a, a character that you're going to recognise straight away. I hope you enjoy it, and if you have any comments or questions, type them down below and I'll do my best to get back to each one. Thanks very much, enjoy the video. To get the reference image, I just took a picture of my phone using two pieces of white plastic as the background. The thing was lit just using the lights from my desk. Starting off, I trim away all the bits that I don't need, such as the reflections, the background, shadow, things like that. The style of the image that I'm going for is built up using lots of blocks of solid colour. So I'm taking colour references from the base image and then adding layers on top filled with those colours. As you can see I'm using lots of different shades for the buffer beam because you don't want to be all one shade of red. I'm not worrying too much about what the actual colour looks like at the moment as long as it's just a reference that I can come back to later. Since it's a solid colour and it exists on its own layer it's quite easy to edit later on. Something I found quite useful was to make a copy of the layer of the train and make it black so I'd be able to use it as infill later on and also give me an idea of how much progress I'd done of the colour blocks. The Art Deco style that I was going for didn't involve a lot of detail so I'm actually using colour blocks to obscure quite a lot of it and create large areas of single colour that I will then shade later on. What's also quite nice to do is to use the colour blocks to show areas of light hitting the metalwork differently. So. As an example, the top of the tender is catching the dawn sun, so it comes out a much lighter shade of green. It's quite important that all the layers are slightly different shades, and you want to be able to tell the difference between the layers quite easily. One item of detail that I did decide to include was the nameplate, as I feel that the Northwestern Railway would have been very proud of their locomotive and wanted people to be able to read it. Items such as wheel spokes are not things I'll be rendering in this. They're too fiddly and I think that they would spoil the image, so I'm going for solid discs to create the illusion of speed. What really brings the picture to life is adding shading. I'm using the burn tool in Photoshop to lightly scorch the edges of the colour blocks to break them up and create a colour gradient across them. Every single layer gets a bit of the burn tool, 
On some illustrations, I like to keep all of the scorch marks on the same side to keep the colour gradient going the same way from dark to light across the whole image. I'm also using it to give an impression of shadow in some areas, such as across by the handrails on the boiler. Using the gradient tool I created a sky which I wanted to look like dawn. The idea is that the flying kipper is speeding along just as the sun is coming up. The font I'm using is Gil Sands, regularly used by the l &ER and other companies. I tried out a few variations of the bottom text as well, before I settled on the one I liked. The steam is created by using a real reference image and the filter gallery effect. There's a variety of different filters you can use and brush stroke is the one I usually use to blend the colours and shades and create more of an impressionistic view. It's a lot easier to do it this way than to try and create it in colour blocks as with the locomotive because there's just so many different shades. I'm using an overlay layer to create some texture as if it was an old poster printed on thick paper. To give the impression of speed, I've created some white lines and feathered the ends so that they look like speed streaks. This is based on contemporary illustrations of the time. Finally, Luke from the Oak Hill Gang suggested that I put the correct head code on, so this is class C for fish traffic. And that's it! Here's a few examples of the other posters I've done, keep an eye out on the shop for these appearing soon. Hope you enjoyed this video, as mentioned in the intro, please do give a comment, and why not like and subscribe at the same time if you haven't already? Ooh, one last thing before you go, you can also buy port badges from my shop. And these are quite special because all the profits made from selling these go towards the real Portbury and its home line, the Bristol Harbour Railway, which is my local line. All steam railways in the UK are struggling at the moment due to the Covid crisis, so they could really use your help with the maintenance and restoration projects going on there. Plus, you get a cool badge as well.